What if Barack Obama actually created a new New Deal? What if he created a fundamental change in America in a way that, I I mean, a a real meaningful, non-rhetorical, you know, non-political, a real, a real fundamental change in America and succeeded and did it and put it into law and got it going. Well, Michael Grunwald is with us. He is the author. uh, He's, first of all, the senior national correspondent for Time magazine. Uh, a guy with uh, incredible credibility in these issues. The, and he, but he's the author, more importantly, of a new book called The New New Deal, The Hidden Story of Change in the Obama Era. And we had him on our TV show last week or, or a couple weeks back. And, and Michael, it is an honor and pleasure to have you here on our radio program as well. Oh, thanks so much for your kind words. Uh, Michael, tell us about the Obama stimulus package and how this was more than simply you know, throwing some spaghetti at the wall and hoping something sticks and, you know, the, the way it's been largely portrayed. Right. No, it's been covered as this $800 billion joke that's full of, you know, mob museums and levitating trains to Disneyland and all kinds of other nonsense that is not in the actual bill. Um, what it did, the, the bill was called the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. And What it did was it sort of sparked a recovery as well as long-term reinvestment. Um, It really did prevent the depression. Uh, The GDP had fallen 9% in the fourth quarter of 2008. At that that rate, you lose an entire Canadian economy in 2009. But after losing 800,000 jobs the month Obama took over, the next month after he passes the stimulus, and the next quarter they have the biggest improvement in jobs in 30 years. Wow. So it really did uh, prevent something awful. But at the same time, this was really the purest distillation of what Obama meant by change. This is where, excuse me, I'm at the uh, Republican convention, so, you know, they're playing this music. That's the fine. I, I understand Obama. perfectly. The, 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 the ambiance is, is just great. Go for yeah. it, Michael. But what I was going to say is that this is really where, this is where Obama got to keep all those, those big promises he had made on the campaign trail about moving to a clean energy economy and reforming education and starting to reduce our health care costs and investing in infrastructure and research and cutting middle class taxes. He did all this stuff with that eight hundred billion dollars, but nobody really noticed it. Now, you're the senior national correspondent for Time magazine. If if it's true that Barack Obama actually did something that was as significant as the Great Society or the New Deal or in the in the range of that why wasn't it on the cover of Time magazine? Not to, you know, say that you have any responsibility for that. And why has the rest of the media largely ignored it? You know, it's a really good question. Look, part of it is that, uh, you know, that this was, in the country was sort of like Wiley Coyote after we step off the cliff. Um, yeah. But we, you know, sort of looking left and right, but haven't yet started to fall. Right. I mean, unemployment wasn't that high when Obama took over, took over. And so there was this sense that unlike the FDR, who took over after three years of depression that everybody knew was Hoover's depression. You know, Obama took over, passes this big jobs bill, and then suddenly the jobless rate starts increasing. It just, you know, it's hard to explain that jobs are a lagging indicator, you know, that things would have been so much worse. That makes a lousy bumper sticker. So I think part of it was just the circumstances out of control. Then you had this relentless Republican campaign of distortion um, where they were very unified and very smart and very dishonest in the way they described this thing as just, you know, a big government mess. And then you had the media that really was not interested in getting at the truth, partly because, you know, it was sort of a he said, she said story. And you had Republicans saying that it was a mess. And on the other hand, you kind of had Democrats saying it was a mess. You know, it's not big enough or there are too many tax cuts. Well, but you had or, he you said know, he, you had you're right. There was a he said, she said. Right. But there were also actual real facts and statistics. You've included right. them in your well, book not, at some length. <laughs> Um, why yeah, wasn't not, anybody not paying attention to those? You know, look, I think it's just, this is a, you know, I, I live in South Beach now, you know, that public policy paradise. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I do think that if I still lived in, I spent nine years at the Washington Post, and I think if I still live in D.C., I'm not sure I could have written this book, because the group think is so strong. It's exactly what led to the, uh, you know, the way the media missed the story before the Iraq war, right. where anybody who talks about the Recovery Act is anything other than this joke. You've got to just sort of roll your eyes and sneer. It's like you're, you know, you're not cool. You don't get it. 
Um, I, you know, when I, you know, I love my bosses, but when I first pitched to them in 2010 that I wanted to write this kind of revisionist story about the, the stimulus, it really it was like I was, I don't know if you watched the newsroom, but I was like that blogger who's always trying to pitch a story about how Bigfoot is real. Yeah, I keep, I keep hearing about it. I haven't seen the show yet, but I, I, I'll take it's, your story. You know, it's just, it seems so preposterous when, uh, you know, the, the conventional wisdom, the prevailing na- narrative was so set in stone. Um, and, you know, with all due respect to my colleagues in Washington, they're not very interested in public policy. Um, they're interested in, you know, how's the president doing? And because unemployment was rising, the president was his numbers weren't very good. And then the narrative just becomes sort of piling on where you had these ridiculous gotcha stories with no gotcha, um, where the stimulus was treated as this kind of policing of America story yeah. instead of a story about sort of changing the way we approach America's most intractable problems. Amazing. So where where is the American Stimulus and Recovery Act, if I'm remembering correctly the title of it? Uh, where does it stand today? Well, you know, most of the money has been spent, and it's been, you know, it's really been a remarkable success. The most Before of the, the money recovery- is not spent? No, most of the money has been has spent. been spent. Okay, um, uh, and uh, it's been amazing. Uh, you know, before the stimulus, independent experts predicted that about five to seven percent of it would be lost by lost to fraud. They put the toughest investigator in Washington in, in charge of overseeing it, um, and after three years, when he left, the total fraud had came out to zero point zero zero one percent. We've already doubled renewable energy in this country because of the stimulus. It was dead in the water before the Recovery Act. We've, we've, got, we've jump-started a smart grid. Um, we've created an advanced battery industry for electric vehicles out of thin air. Um, so that now we have the capacity to build half a million electric cars in this country. We've started to transform our pen and paper healthcare system into the digital age so that your doctor won't kill you with his pen and pa- you know, when he, with his chicken scratch handwriting when, right. he, uh, when he writes out a prescription. You know, we're really starting to see this change. 95% of working people in America got a tax cut, although less than 10% of Americans are aware of it. 7 million people have been lifted out of poverty. 1.2 million people were prevented from homelessness by this new program that really is designed to prevent homelessness before it happens. It's really been sort of one success story after another, but those stories really haven't been told. And. Yeah, are, is the you know I mean obviously you're out there telling the story you, you, you wrote a book on it and, and you're here on our program and you're you're doing the best to promote the book but um, is there anybody else telling this story you would think that the Obama campaign would be doing this we have a, a, a minute to the end of the to the end of the segment here sir Michael. you know you know it's funny I I was, I was joked that you know maybe my book will become a runaway bestseller and everybody then everybody will know about this but it's funny, as you said I've been a mainstream media reporter for 20 years. You know, I've been tough on Republicans and Democrats, but suddenly I've written this book, and it's like I can't get on, uh, you know, only MSNBC wants to have me on, and, and yeah. your show very generously, and I'm not knocking it. I'm thrilled to, to go out and, and sort of preach to the converted, too, um, but, uh, but it's been very tough getting, the, getting this message out because it's sort of not what Washington wants to hear. And frankly, Obama, who is a politician, he's in no mood to tell the story either because, you know, the stimulus... A year after it passed, even though every independent economist will say that it created about 3 million jobs, the percentage of Americans who believe it created jobs is lower than the percentage who believe Elvis is alive. So they just feel like Obama told his economic team, look, I get the Keynesian thing, but it's not where the electorate is. And they're, wow. not, they're not really interested in trying to, uh, trying to convince Americans otherwise. They, is, they have a different message they're trying is, to get out. This is such an opportunity lost. Michael Grunewald, check out the book. This is this is really brilliant. It's a book worth buying. It's called The New New Deal, The Hidden Story of Change in the Obama Era by Michael Grunewald. Michael, thank you for being with us. Well, I really appreciate what, what you said about this it, and I really Tom do hope people Hartman read program. it, because even the converted might be surprised by what they read. Yeah, it's no, there's a, there's a lot of great substance in this book. Michael, thank you again.